Hi guys, Mike from the Off Grid Shop here. We get asked this question all the time, should I put more panels up or should I put batteries in? I'm gonna jump over and show you some stuff on how we design solar systems so it gives you a bit of an idea what's the best solution for yourself. Share my screen here. This program here is a program we whack down for people to work out how much systems are gonna produce. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, don't have a perfect face and roof and things like that. And we'll just pick on some roofs here. We'll grab these guys here. There's gonna be enough roofs to play with. Basis cost me money every time I buy this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I want to grab some as many roofs as possible to have a bit of a play around and just show you. Here we go. So a lot of these roofs here, people say, oh, it's not ideal for solar. And if you are thinking about home battery storage, fill your roof. That's my rule of thumb. I've just actually put a new solar system up at my place, which I'll do a video in the next few weeks. I've just fit I used to have a 13 kilowatt solar system up there. I've actually now squeezed up a 25 kilowatt. So look, we're going to grab here. Let's grab some REC alphas. Then my favorite solar panel of the month at the moment, the old REC Alpha 400 uh, Pure. These are lead free. There's an amazing panel. So for the value of them, these are amazing. Now, one thing we get in a solar system, I'd highly recommend when you've got someone doing a design for you and some quotes is get a couple of different panel options so you can really see the difference in price. Everyone uses a Van Nagel really flash inverter. Uh, in my opinion, I'd put a cheaper inverter up if you're on a budget and really good panels because if inverter fails, you know, it's going to cost you a thousand bucks and an hour of some bloke's time to come around and fix it. If it's panels, removing panels and all that sort of stuff, it's time. There's a lot more money involved and wouldn't really worry about it. So uh, put the best quality panels up. If you want to save some money, save some money on an inverter. Now let's grab this. We actually just use this roof as an example. Now what I like to do, a lot of networks these days are stopping how much you can feed back to the grid. And if you are going to do batteries, this is what I'd highly recommend. We design a lot of off-grid solar systems of what we do. So there's a little product here. You can do all this sort of stuff and just see how many panels you can put. So that's actually facing north. You can see how many panels are facing north there. And it's going to fit on the roof. I'm just going to leave that. It's probably hanging over the edges and don't do that. If someone's going to design your system hanging over edges, just make sure that you're okay with that. Uh, a lot of panel manufacturers, the warranties will be voided. Something to think about. So I'd highly recommend, I'm going to copy this. Uh, let's paste it. If this was my house, this is what I'd have panels everywhere. So if this is my house, I'd be whacking panels over here. And as you see, we can't really fit those ones up there. Get rid of those ones. And we'll do that again. More over here. Oh, wrong tool. Because what you're trying to do here is you're actually trying to spread your production out during the day. Because if you are export limited, and I'd actually really question the installer doing your job. A lot of companies just say that you're export limited because to get more than five kilowatts of feedback grid requires to do paperwork and they require to do a heap of calculations, which is so annoying to do. Um, I've never done one. I use a program to do it. And um, a lot of companies and a lot of companies just have it tick and flick five kilowatt because five kilowatt just gets approved straight away. There's no questions asked. Don't need to do the calculations. But in your situation, what you're trying to do, if you think about it like this, You've got panels in the east here. So in winter, the sun's going to rise over here somewhere and it's going to set over here. So literally these panels are going to do your best performance here in, in summer. These ones here, these ones are going to do the best performance here in winter. These ones here, they're really just going to start to crank and then the sun's going to come around. And same thing in the afternoon, these ones will start to crank and then the sun will come around. You can see all the different productions here. So 33 kilowatt hour, Hours per day, this system will produce in the middle of January with panels facing that way, and in the middle of June, 18.6. Now, if we actually spun all these panels around and face them north, we'll just grab those ones, for example. We have one east, one north roof. Now, as you can see, still 33 kilowatt hours a day in summer and 20 kilowatt hours a day in winter. So it's a little bit more production in winter but what happens though is as a customer, you self-consume more. And this is so important from batteries when you think about, if you're thinking about adding a home battery system, the biggest problem I see with people is when they install a system, they don't put enough solar panels up because you want extra solar panels to be able to charge the battery and get that later on. So by having these panels face all different directions, it means in the morning, if your battery is flat, you're on solar sooner. Or if you're a little bit left in your battery, you're on solar sooner. And you're spreading out your daily production. So it gives you more hours of the day to actually use your solar system. Actually zoom this in. So you're self-consuming more solar. 
the more solar you self-consume, the better it is. So if you're thinking about putting a home battery storage in, I'd highly recommend before you do that, make sure your roof is maximized with panels because the more panels you got, the more you're going to charge your batteries, the more you'll live on solar and the less you'll live on batteries, which makes putting batteries in a more of a cheaper option. Now, if you have a look at these other houses as well, just think like that because a lot of people think, oh, I just don't have the ideal roof for solar. This person here, probably not, probably not an ideal roof for solar. You'd want to put all their panels west here. And with putting panels all different directions here, like if this was my house here, I'm pretty sure this is two different roof faces, but I'd have panels all the way down the flat roof down there on the flat roof there. I'd also have panels on the south. Now panels in the south, they actually do produce, you lose about 40% capacity in winter. It's just that simple. And in summer, you gain a bit more back because in summer, well, let's actually have a look at this right now. So just say, for example, we didn't have this north facing roof. We've got an east and a west roof here. And in summer, our system's on 33 kilowatt hours per day. Let's grab these panels and we just spin them around because that makes them think that they're facing south. So if we did that. So as you can see in summer, our production actually went up by having south-facing solar panels, which is pretty crazy. So in summer, you're actually going to produce more in the summer months by having your panels face south. And in winter, you know, you've lost about five kilowatt hours a day. It really doesn't matter what direction your roof faces here in Australia, just cover it in panels. That is the biggest tip I can give you. If you're thinking about home battery storage in the future, the problem I see with people is they think, I'm wanting to get batteries in the future. I'm just going to put a 6.6 kilowatt solar system. Then in the future, you need to add more panels and then you buy an electric car and then because you've got solar and you've got free energy, you put bigger air cons in, you do more stuff with it. Over the last 10 years being involved in this industry, I've learned even myself, I just doubled the size of my solar system because I could was one of the main reasons. And I have two electric cars now. So basically it takes more to charge the cars, more power and things like that. So the one tip I would give you, forget about home battery storage maximize your roof panels first, like every single roof space. And I'm serious. If this was my house here, I would have panels everywhere. There would not be. I will show you a picture of my place. There is one roof on it that has panels on it and it's getting replaced. So once it's replaced, it'll have panels on it. So yeah, guys, I hope this has been helpful to think about home battery storage. You want more and more panels because the more panels you got, the more batteries you can charge. And the reality is as well, if you've got panels all over your roof, you're living on batteries less because as soon as that sun comes up in the east in the morning, bang, you're living straight from solar, you're off your batteries. Same with an afternoon, that late afternoon, especially if you have a western facing roof like this guy over here, if I was a heavy aircon user, I'd be really jealous of this guy. I mean, just think about the way you live your life. If, 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 if this guy here, he got up in the morning, went to work, him and his partner, they were gone, they were off work all day long. They come home at five o'clock in summer and they crank the aircon and they've got this big western roof to run the air conditioners all afternoon. I'd be really jealous of this guy because he's going to be directly running his solar panels from that western sun. So really think about when you use your energy. Hope this has been helpful, guys. Any questions or comments, work it down below. Until next time, have a great day.